Hey guys, it's Andy Elliott. I want to talk to you about the art, the lost art of the write-up sheet. Now listen to me. I'm going to tell you why a lot of amateurs out there right now are missing a lot of profits on car deals because they don't know about the write-up sheet. By the way, because they're lazy or they've never been taught. But I'm going to teach you right now. So I need your attention till the end of the video and if you're in the automotive space, you will end this video being better than you are right now. So number one, the power in the write-up sheet is so that you can ask the client how they want their new car titled. To write down the vehicle they're going to be buying and then also talk about the vehicle that they're going to be trading in. Okay? It's very simple. And by the way, where do you have your car financed with? Okay, I'm going to write that down. Roughly, what do you believe the payoff is? I'm going to call and get a 10-day payoff, but what do you believe it is? What is your monthly payment right now? And then also, we're going to ask a few more questions that nobody does. I'm going to get to it here in just a minute. But what if I don't ask, how do you want your new car title? And I sit down and say, okay, Mr. Mrs. Johnson, do you have an ID on you? And the guy hands out his license and he gives it to you. And then you start typing it in your system or you copy it on your write-up sheet and then you go and get a copy of his driver's license and give it back to him. Can I ask you a question? Did you say, how do you want your new car titled? Where would you like the paperwork mailed to for your new vehicle? Did you say any of that stuff? No, you didn't. So the client doesn't even believe that they're actually there to buy a car. Isn't that crazy? You know why they don't believe they're there to buy a car? Because no one's told them they're buying a car yet. And that's your job. That's your job, but you're not doing it. You're just copying down information off of a driver's license. And then you're hoping to come back with some numbers that are enticing enough that they say, oh, well, man, you know what? I think we're gonna go ahead and buy it. But can I ask a little question? Most of the time, aren't cars more expensive than people want them to be? Aren't payments a little higher than people want them to be? Aren't interest rates up a little bit right now? Yes. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor, I'm gonna tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Are we ever giving people too much for their trades or is it never enough? Never enough? Okay, so if you can't get them to commit to buy the car on the worksheet, do you think they're gonna be ready to buy the car when you bring out numbers that are a little higher than they want? No, they're gonna get up and your manager is gonna go, where are your customers going? And the guy goes, oh, I didn't agree to buy a car. I thought you were just showing me numbers. Yeah, that's your fault. So we're gonna go into the art of the write-up sheet. We're gonna go A to Z, you ready? A to Z, art of the write-up sheet. Here we go. Number one, how do you want your new car titled? Very simple. Whether you're typing it or writing it, write that down. Number two, where do you want the paperwork on your new vehicle to be mailed to? Your home or your office, which one? It's very simple, just ask the question. Okay, don't get smart on me, ask the question. When you're done with that, you're gonna say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you're buying a 2012 or a 2023 Chevy Silverado, crew cab, four-wheel drive, black. I'm gonna go get the exact mile off the vehicle, but we know it has around 8,000 miles, okay? I'm gonna get the exact odometer off of it, okay? Also, on top of that, you're gonna be trading in your vehicle today, right? Your 2013 Chevy Malibu outside. I noticed it was silver. And by the way, who's the payoff with? Oh, okay, GMAC, awesome. And how long have you guys had the vehicle for? Three years, awesome. And what's the monthly payment on it? That's the monthly payment amount. And some of you guys may say, Andy, we don't have to ask all those questions. I know you don't have to, but you're going to start asking them because you're gonna understand. I'm gonna give you some more questions to ask here in just a minute that's gonna show you the art of the write-up sheet. Okay, and by the way, if you're typing in a computer, I would highly suggest that you have a blank piece of paper once you're done how they want their new car titled, where they want the paperwork mailed to, the car they're buying, and the car they're trading. I would highly recommend having a piece of paper ready to write down on in front of you so that you can understand how you're going to close them. Are you ready? Okay, so now that I've got all the information, if I have a write-up sheet, it's here, okay? Or if I'm typing it here, I'm gonna grab my blank piece of paper and I'm gonna ask two questions. You ready? Write this down. Okay, ready? My general manager gives most money for vehicles that have been serviced the best. Okay, write that down. My general manager gives the most money for vehicles that have been serviced the best. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, would you mind sharing everything you've done on your vehicle Okay, as far as money spent within the last two to three years on it. That way I can share it with my general manager so I can make sure I get you the top dollar for your vehicle. 
Now at this time, they're going to share things that they've done on their car and money that they've spent. Now, can I ask you a question? In a minute, monthly payments are gonna come up. Am I right? You're gonna bring them a pencil? Monthly payments are gonna come up and they're gonna say, oh, I can't afford that. Because they're gonna say, I'm only paying this now. I can't afford that. Well, in a minute, they're going to give you all of this stuff that they've done and then they're gonna tell you how much they spend and they're going to believe that they can get more money for the car, which they can. And if you told your manager about it, I bet they would get more money for it because now you're sharing with your manager how nice this trade-in is. But also there's a flip side to it too, which I want you to understand. I'm getting more money for the trade-in now by telling my manager everything they did. Now he wants that vehicle in the lot. And then the flip side is, hey, this client, they're paying $400 a month, but if they've been spending $1,200 a year on maintenance and stuff, guess what? 1,200 divided by 12 months in a year, that's really $100 a month in a small maintenance payment. They're not paying 400, they're paying 500. You feel me? I'm finding where the money is in other. Now, what did I say? My general manager gives the most money for vehicles that have been serviced the best. Would you mind sharing everything you've done for your car within the last two or three years? Art of the write-up sheet, baby. All right, so the second question you wanna ask is obviously the vehicle that you're trading in today, we do need to make it like new for the next client that's gonna own it. Like if you were gonna trade your car in today and your daughter was gonna buy it, we'd probably have to service it and get it ready for her to own it, right? What are some things that you could think that need to be done to your vehicle so when you trade it in today, I can make sure I let my service manager know about it so he can get those things fixed first. Nobody knows your vehicle better than you. What would those be? And guess what? Now they're going to tell us, well, you know, I know that sometimes the air conditioner works and, and sometimes it don't work, okay? Well, listen, right now the manager just drove the car, the air conditioner is working just fine, but if it doesn't work sometimes, that's a problem, am I right? Now they're gonna share with us that. Would we have known about that if they wouldn't have told us? No, they're going to share some stuff with us about their vehicle that needs to get fixed. Why would we ask this question, okay? My general manager gives top dollar for vehicles that have been serviced the best. Also, that's question one. Also, my, my service manager, he loves to get these cars serviced like new for the next customer that's gonna own it. What is everything you could think of that needs to be done to your car next? And then say anything you can think of work that needs to be done, please let me know so I can make sure I share it at the end with my service manager. Now I'm gonna explain these two things for you. This is the art of the pencil. Number one, they shared with us all the money they spent. Now that's gonna be money justification, okay, for additional money they spent besides our monthly payment. On the flip side, now they're sharing with us money that needs to be spent on their car, that guess what? If they didn't trade it in today, they would also have to spend that money to get that stuff fixed. You see? We're releasing them of that burden. You feel me? Now, what's the art of this worksheet? The art of the worksheet is to gather information, to gather intel and gather data so that we come in for the close, we're equipped and prepared. Now, if anybody's watching this right now and I have flown over your head and you don't understand this, you need to watch this 20 times until you get it. There is a professional out there that gathers the right intel, that when they can go in for a close, they envision the negotiation in advance, they have everything they need, and guess what? They're ready to strike. Amateurs don't ask customers about their trade-ins. Pros do. Now, we're gonna go to the flip side, are you ready? Now, the back half of what questions you ask is this. Hey, most of my customers put anywhere from 10 to 15% cash down, comfortably, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, how much were you prepared to put down today, how much? Be quiet. What did I say? Most of my customers put anywhere between 15 to 20% cash down. Most of my customers put anywhere between 15 to 20% cash down. Comfortably, how much were you guys prepared to put down today? Take your pencil, take your pen, and put it against the piece of paper and wait. Just like this. And they're gonna say, oh, well, we were only wanting to put 1,000 down. Okay, cool, no problem, guys. Hey, I'm gonna put option A. Say it, I'm gonna put option A as 1,000. Now, I would also like to put an option B with maybe a little more money down because we know the more money you put down, it does help dramatically lower the monthly payment. Does that make sense? So if we did use an option B, how much more cash could you put down? And I'll show you both ways and in the end it's your decision. Is that fair? Get an option B. Well, I guess if it would help on the payment, show us an option with 3,500 down. So right now, they're about to get a pencil from you, which is gonna be the proposal of what the dealership's going to offer them with price, payment, trade-in, and probably maybe an interest rate, okay? Now, I want you to understand, when you go out, if you haven't talked about cash down and your manager just writes an amount of cash down on a piece of paper, if you haven't asked any questions, now on the pencil, you're actually talking about cash down. See, I like to talk about it beforehand. Okay, there's no numbers on the table, there's no price. I haven't given them a number on their trade-in yet. I haven't shown them how big the payment's gonna be on the car. 
So they haven't seen any of that stuff. So they feel pretty comfortable if they're going to go up and down payment talking about that before the pencil because there's really no other numbers to be scared about. Does that make sense? So I'm going to ask, hey, most of my customers put anywhere between 15 to 20% cash down. Comfortably, how much are you guys gonna put down? A thousand dollars. Awesome. I'm gonna put option A, thousand bucks. Also, we know this, the more money you put down, it does help dramatically lower the monthly payment. So I'd like to show you an option B with a little more cash and in the end, it's your decision, okay? So if, if you put more than a thousand, how much would it be? And I'll show you both ways. It's completely up to you. Um, do 2,000. Okay, cool. How much do they have down now? A thousand or 2,000. So when you go back to your manager, your manager knows that this client now has some money down. Money down can help with a better interest rate. It helps with the lower monthly payment. It helps offset the carry of a car deal in case maybe there's negative equity or maybe the client's buying a lifted truck or something and the bank won't finance all of it. Money down would help that loan to value come into balance. Money down is, is so important in a car deal. Everybody has forgot the art of the write-up sheet, okay? And I don't know if it's because we just don't talk about it anymore, but this right here this is how all the money is made, and this is how you best communicate with your client. If your goal is to provide a customer experience through the roof, if you ask these questions I just asked, I know more about your customers in just like two or three minutes than most people will know coming in blindsided saying, oh man, you, you just don't want to pay that, you don't want to pay it. It's like, dude, now we're just arguing and nobody knows what's really going on, okay? I want to help you guys become professionals. So this is the lost art. I haven't showed you how to pencil a deal, okay? This is the lost art of how to use a worksheet to go in for a write-up and be the best at it. By the way, my name is Andy Elliott. I know you guys know who I am. I made 700 grand a year my last year selling cars. If you're not earning over a half a million a year, you can. I don't care where you came from. I don't care who you are. I don't care. I care who do you want to be. You want to be the best in the world? You want to be the top earner? You want to be the top 1% in the industry? I hope these tricks, tactics, and techniques have helped you better yourself to make more money. Now, if you're ready to get off the porch and go hang out with the big dogs and you want to really earn what you're worth, number one, they say when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I've created a training system called Project 500. It's how to make 500 grand a year selling cars. I'd love to give you access to it. If you want to shoot me a text message, write this down, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. You shoot me a text message. I'll send you all, say, hey, Andy, my name's John. Give me some information on Project 500. I'll send you all the details, check it out. I'd love to help you go to the top. I hope this video really helped you guys go to another level. And more importantly, understand where most amateurs, they miss stuff like this. Understand how I don't want you to miss it and I want you to be the best. I got your back for life. Make sure you shoot me a text message. See you guys soon. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are, set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.